In this video, we're going to do some tabbed content with advanced actions. Okay, let's get started. So I got a request from Justina Sharma from India. She wrote in asking if I could take a look at one of the things, one of the projects that she was working on. And uh, I brought it up on the screen here. Her question was uh, that she have a requirement that the next and previous buttons uh, to be uh, have to be only visible when all three tabs are clicked. And she wrote a conditional action for the same, but it's not working. So she asked me to help out here. So I'm just going to go to a version of this that I've started. I've done this here, and I'll make this file available on my website that you can download and and use in your own projects as well so i've done it a little bit differently than justina what i did is i had a background here with a nice gradient and i have three different objects uh, with the text that changes for tab one two and three and i've got some rollover effects incidentally uh, justina only has adobe captivate eight so while I might do this with uh, multi-state objects in Adobe Captivate 9, she's limited to Adobe Captivate 8. So I'm going to use Adobe Captivate 8. And this is a great solution if you're looking for that multi-state object effect, but you don't have the latest upgrade. So let me realign these. A uh, couple, couple things before I do, though is that so tab one tab two and tab three will will display these these uh text boxes or actually uh, smart shapes um and presently i have them set up to be hidden so they're not visible in output the advanced action will be what makes them visible or not also too i've made uh, a very clear attempt here to label each of these so that it's easier to find them later content one uh, content two and three as appropriate. So let me just realign these back up again. So pretty straightforward. I've got three buttons, three boxes of text, and I've got a back and next button. Now for her requirement that she has, she has to have those back and next buttons not visible in output as well. So I have a back button. The action is really straightforward. It's go to previous slide and a next button let's go to next slide and again as you can see um, the visibility is turned off for these so when you run the course or this project you won't see those right away but we want them to be visible once the user has clicked all three tabs now you could simply do a counter for this uh, and set up a single variable and when it gets to the number three um, you know, and you can increment it each time that they click one of the three buttons. But the problem with that is that uh, you could click the same button three times. I want to make sure that they've clicked all three different tabs. So what I need, first of all, is I need three different variables to store that information. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the project drop down menu and select variables. So I'm going to create uh, two or sorry three new uh, variables. I'm going to call them. I'm just going to keep that consistent. Click one, and its initial value will be zero. And we'll do a uh, click two. Also initial value of zero. And click three zero value so I have those three clicks let's hit close and I'm gonna create three different advanced actions here so the very first one will be associated with tab one and um, incidentally I'm just going to do a little bit of housekeeping here I like to put the hand cursor on all of my clickable objects and I also like to disable the click sound because I'm not a fan. Uh, so let's start off with tab one. The action for tab one will be to 
execute advanced actions and we don't have any advanced actions yet so I'm going to have to create that and here's what we're going to do. So this is going to be called, well we'll just call it tab 1. And oh sorry it can't be a standard action we need a conditional action so let me change that we'll call this tab 1. And uh, what we're, what we're going to check for first of all is those click variables. Now we know for example because we are working on tab 1 that they've already clicked tab 1 so we don't need to check that but what we do need to check is tab 2 and tab 3 and let's just do this we'll do uh, if the variable click 2 is equal to well actually we should just as a precaution greater or equal to the literal value of 1. In other words, we've clicked it at least one time. And if the variable of click 3 is greater or equal to the literal value of 1, then we're going to run the actions that you see below. And those actions will be to do several things. We're going to increment click 1 by 1. So we're going to take care of keeping track of, of the fact that we've clicked tab 1. We're also going to uh, show content 1, but in case this isn't the first time that we're clicking tab 1, we also want to hide Content 2, and hide Content 3. Now the one thing that's missing here is to deal with the back and the next buttons. And so what we're going to do here, and I don't know if I've labeled those properly. Let me save this as an action first of all. We can go back and edit it once it's complete. And we'll call this back, and we'll call this one next. Ch giving it a label is entirely optional, uh, a unique label as I've just done. But remember, of course, that the uh, you know the advantage will be that it'll be easier to find when you're working with your advanced actions. So let's click on that tab one again, and We'll just go in and we'll edit the tab one script. So now again, this is if all conditions are true. In other words, I've clicked one because that's that's the tab we're, we're working with here. I've clicked two and three. So therefore, I also want to be able to show. And we're going to show the back button. And show the next button. So this is again if we've done all three clicks this is what's going to happen here. Now what we want to do of course is um, go to the else part of the statement and everything will be the same except we're not going to show the back and next because that's what this conditional action is really set up to check for. Have you checked for, have you looked at all three pieces of content? Yes? Okay show the back and the next button. But we still want to run all of this information that you see here. We still want to show content 1, we still want to hide content 2 and 3, and we also want to increment the click by 1. So let's do that right now. So we'll increment click 1 by 1. That's still going to be the same. And we're going to show content 1, hide content 2, hide content 3, and let me just double check if I'm forgetting anything there. No, that's about it. So there's our advanced action for uh, click 1 or tab 1 if you will. So I'm going to update this action and we're going to hit close 
and we're going to go and do the same thing for tab 2. But again, we're starting off with the assumption that, yes, you've already clicked tab 2. Let's check if you've clicked tab 1 and 3. Show the appropriate content, of course, and then possibly display the back and next button if all of those conditions are met. So let's now go to Execute Advanced Action. And what we can do is I'm going to click on the Advanced Actions icon, and we're going to duplicate Tab 1. And the reason is, is that the, the code will almost be the same. The Advanced Action will almost be identical. So we'll duplicate that. We just need to change a couple things. So I'm going to first of all change the title, the action name, to be Tab 2. And instead of click 2, we're going to check for uh, click 1 and make sure that's greater than or equal to 1. We're going to increment click 2 by 1. And we're going to show content 2, hide content 1, and then the same thing on the else statement here. So change that to click 2, show content 2, and hide content 1. So that's pretty good there. We'll update that action. And we'll do the same thing for tab 3. We'll run execute advanced actions. We'll hit the advanced actions icon. You can see it's really straightforward. We're going to duplicate this existing script. We'll call this tab 3. And so what we're going to be checking for is click 2 and click 1. So I'll change click 3 to click 1. So again, we it's assumed that we're we're already uh, assuming that tab three has been clicked because that this is the advanced action for it. So let's check if click one and two have also been clicked, and then if so, we'll increase click three by one. We'll show uh, in this case we'll show content three and hide content two and one then show the back and next and if of course this condition is not met we'll do everything the same except not show back and next so let's just change this to content 3 and this to content 1 and change this to click number 3 let me just double check that there uh, click 3 yeah so there we go I think we have a pretty good um, advanced action here and I'm just going to close this so that's really it so uh, this should work fine let's test it out right now and I'll just do a preview here and we'll do this project so again we have our three tabs so let's try this again tab one so there's some content associated with tab 1. Tab 2, it updates it. So there's the content associated with tab 2. And tab 3, and of course now the back and next button appear. So this works totally as expected. So again, just to summarize, we've got three different advanced actions. We have three different variables keeping track of whether you've clicked tab 1, 2, or 3. The advanced actions are checking for that. They're showing and hiding the appropriate content, including the back and next buttons. Guys, if you like the videos that I produce for you, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you thought this video was useful or helpful or entertaining or educational, go ahead and give me a thumbs up.